Hey, welcome back to Ladypreneur Legacy, episode one. We're divinely created, and he says each of us has a mission, and it's our job to find out what that mission is and to help as many people as we can on the way. Welcome to the Visibility Vixen Podcast, where we create space to grow our brand with intention and clarity, one episode at a time. Join us as we explore the many aspects of entrepreneurship, start loving the journey instead of the destination, and begin building a legacy that lasts. Here's your host, Michelle Lewis. Okay, welcome back to Ladypreneur Legacy. So happy that you're here with us today. Today is one of those family circle episodes that I was talking to you about that we were gonna do. So we are here with my dad, Arthur, my mom, Tawny, and my husband, Nathan. So, um, you know, people have not heard you guys' voices before, so why don't we go around and you can just briefly say who you are and what you do and that kind of good stuff. Well, my name is Tawny. I'm Michelle's mother, and I've been on this journey with her. We've been on many journeys. We went into the natural healing uh, studies for four years to understand why Michelle had such horrific headaches and other issues, and we ended up exposing ourselves to so much information. I remember in classes, Michelle, that we would literally go, I, I can't take anymore. And we would <laughs> we would just be dumbfounded by some of the concepts that we had never been exposed to. Yeah. And uh, so now I'm on a journey to get certified in uh, essential oils. So ooh, journey ooh. continues. It does. <laughs> Hi, I'm Arthur. I'm Michelle's dad. And uh, built up her on this journey also. It seems like it's been since birth. Yeah, it has been. That was pretty wild. <laughs> Being born uh, and you couldn't exhale so in intensive care for about 10 days. But, uh, you know, it's funny. A lot of times you go through some really hard things in life and you find out later, you don't understand why you're going through those times when you're going through them. But later you come to find out it's to put you through a learning process. Yeah. So you can learn things. You know, I mean, my family, I come off a farm and we raised our own vegetables. We ate very healthy. Um, and we still had some health challenges, but, you know, then, you know, moving out to the city and moving from East Coast to West Coast, you know, your diet changes and you start having all kind of other health problems. Not getting proper rest and working in the motion picture and TV industry and working 14, 15 hours a day. It wears on your body after, you know, several decades many decades <laughs> that's definitely true and i talked to them a little bit in the first episode about what you do and what i've you know right. been in, in terms of tv and film but they have not heard from hubby dearest well uh my name is nathan and i've been on this journey with michelle for three years of marriage and then mm -hmm. what two uh -oh, years he's before that? the anniversary right? <laughs> uh, it's coming up it is coming <laughs> so uh yeah but anyway uh, yeah, but what I do is I'm a camera assistant in the motion picture business, uh, which is where we met mm -hmm. on a TV show called Chuck, which I think she mentioned in her first podcast. Who knows? Maybe not. I can't remember. But uh, it's been a great journey. We've done a lot of uh, fun things, a lot of growth together as well. Um, changing, I mean, basically changed our lives from what we thought they were to what it is now. Mm -hmm. And it's been fantastic. And what's really interesting is how our conversations have changed because it used to be where we would talk about maybe what was going on in work or in the world or something. And as we were all exposed to new information, we started talking about concepts mm -hmm. and um, what a whole new thing that is. Well, and that's why I wanted to start doing these family circle episodes because I feel like it's a very rare thing to have people that are close to you that you can get together with that you can say, oh, hey, let's talk about, you know, Joe Dispenza the meditations. Oh, hey, let's talk about this healing article that came out about, you know, waves and frequencies and stuff. And when you're on an entrepreneur journey, and that doesn't just have to be online, that can be working in TV film, that can be being a hairdresser, you know, all these different things. But when you're on that journey of self-healing and self-exploration, it can tend to be very lonesome. Mm -hmm. So my purpose, especially with this podcast, is to make people feel um, comfortable, supported, and encouraged. And I know that I get so much encouragement from all of our conversations that what better thing than to bring this to everybody. So what we thought we would talk about today, because it has changed each one of our lives the most, we could talk about natural healing and blah, 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 and we're going to do that eventually. But I really think it comes down to intention 
and then manifestation. So, um, who knew there were such things? I know. <laughs> <laughs> but I've noticed, especially since we've been studying Joe Dispenza and other coaches that really specialize in mindset, what we have been able to do, not only in terms of manifesting things, but changing our personalities, mm-hmm. has been huge. So, mom and dad, I'm going to have you guys kind of talk about more of the journey behind that for us as a family and what it entails. So do you want to kick it off, Mama? Well, you know, for me, it started, I think, with the first book I had to study for my thesis, and it was The Biology of Belief, Dr. Bruce Lipton, who, by the way, is uh, on, a, on the hayhouse.com. He's, mm-hmm. he's going through his information on there in video form. And to... I, I, I stammer only because I've heard all my life from people who probably didn't open a book, but heard all my life that you know you are what your genes are. You can't help it. That's your genes. That's your genes, etc. And he blew that apart and said, "It's not your genes. It's your environment." Scientifically. Scientifically, you have so many genes that aren't uh, expressed, and those were labeled junk genes when. It's like, well, why did you ever label them junk genes? If they're in your body, wouldn't it be something that God intended for your body to have? Mm -hmm. So that started my journey. And I remember distinctly going to uh, Arthur or my husband or dad, whatever we can call him on this conversation, and saying, blah, blah, blah. And he'd go, oh, yeah, I've heard him. And he would go on and on and on. And I used to get so frustrated. Then it became a family joke where Nathan, if you remember, would research stuff before he came to date you because he was trying to determine if he could tell Dad something that Dad didn't know about. Mm -hmm. And every time he came up with this stuff, Dad would say, oh, yeah, da-da-da-da-da-da. He'd one up me. He'd always say, oh, yeah, but did you know this? (laughs) And, of course, you and I are so shallow at that time going, well, no, and then we get on (laughs) researching and get so frustrated. But what it did is it caught, it's very painful, though. It's very painful to take your old habits, your old self, what you believe in, et cetera, and and really take it to task about are those thoughts true? Are your behaviors, are your feelings based on emotional reactions to other people and their reactions to you? And therefore, you're, you're something from your environment, maybe how you grew up or your traumas, and it, you don't even know who you are. Well, and I think what that, the base realization that we can all have today is looking around and going, where am I? Because we tend to go very unconscious. So we, that's how we can automatically drive to work and not remember the drive. That's how we can wake up three months later and be like, oh, I'm still dating this guy? <laughs> like, really? <laughs> so, and we do that too with our careers, with our education, with our personal life, where we look back and it's been a year and there's been no growth. Mm-hmm. And that's the biggest problem with New Year's resolutions right. is that we have these great hopes and ideas, but we don't have the road map to, road map to actually change our patterns. So do right. you want to speak a little to that? Yeah, well, you know, getting back into the journey about healing, I mean, that's how I get interested in uh, things, frequency and Royal Raymond Rife and how he, uh, proven through the Scripps Institute, where he did studies where he used his light waves to heal. He killed bacteria and virus. He would find out what frequency they vibrated at. He would use light frequency to destroy them, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, but unfortunately, you can't make any money on something he wanted to give away for free, and he wouldn't give it up, so that didn't work. So that, be- that began my journey into studying frequency and, um, and studying the mind, right? Because the one thing, you know, we learn biology, we learn the basics of, of biology and how cells work and how the A bi- little bit. A little bit about how the body works. But the one thing you don't take in school, unless you're going to the specialized courses, is how the brain works, right? Yeah. So, you know, the biggest thing that I discovered in studying along that path is that most of our deepest wounds happen when we're young, before we go into puberty. Mm-hmm. Because we're designed to, to be instructed up until we get to the age of puberty. Don't touch that, it'll burn you. Look both ways before you. We're designed because we're being programmed on how to survive and how to live. Which is the reptilian brain. Which is the reptilian brain. So then once, you know, but when you're young and say your parents divorce or something like that, 
you don't have the analytical chemical, you don't have the dopamine and norepinephrine to, to have analytical thought. That's when you go through puberty, why, you know, everybody has conflict with their parents because mm -hmm. all of a sudden you know better. Because now you have analytical thought. You can analyze things, right? Right. Before that time, uh, your parents divorce something bad. You say, oh, that's my fault, mm -hmm. right? Something bad. That's my fault. That's not true at all. But you don't have the chemicals in your brain right. to be able to say, hey, right. that's, not, that's just something that happened to them. I have nothing to do with it. So if the injury comes before the analytical mind develops, that's where people get stuck in past wounds and trauma. And that's being stored in your subconscious mind, right? Yeah. Which, is, which we normally function about 95% unconsciously in our subconscious mind. So let's talk a little bit about unconscious versus versus the conscious mind right so the unconscious is things that we have learned to do it's like you know muscle memory like skiers they imagine the course before they go down they practice they visualize that right mm -hmm. so it's not just their mind that's it, it enabling them to go down the course and achieve they have their body mind focused in on that so it's like it's, that's what they call it muscle memory because the body is helping the, the mind is instructed, the body, and the body remembers that, right? That's sports, that's instrument playing, right. that's driving, right. all those things. So you you learn that. You learn that, you know, to incorporate that, to be able to, to do that. So we also learn negative habits from that. You have some deep wound, you know, uh, some abuse when you were small or something. So you that also applies for an addiction. So. Mm -hmm. You know, your your wound is down here, you're putting on your personal facade up here, your face you put to the world, mm -hmm. but you may have an addiction. It could be alcohol, it could be overeating. Mm -hmm. You that's to suppress that bad feeling from your body, mm -hmm. right? So when you want to change your mind, you have to get in touch with what that early wound is. That's not always pleasant. You have well, to go you have to go back, you have to bring up And bring you have to up. look at the subconscious as a computer. So right. all it does is store, 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 and the subconscious and the reptilian mind are best friends because right. whenever we go somewhere that the subconscious recognizes as a potential threat, it cues the reptilian brain and says, That's run, right. emergency, oh and, my and, God. You're, and you're never present. That's like you no. can you're, be, right. You're not seeing, you're actually not seeing what's crossed you're from just, you, the room from you. You're looking through the lenses of your old wounds right. instead of being present. That's why you can be... 50 years old, go back to your parents' house, and you act like you're 14 because they're punching the same old, and your, and your subconscious is going, oh, remember last time they said, here's how you reacted, and that right. same visceral feeling comes up in your right. body, and the anger, and all. And I you know, like to call him the raptor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so when that happens, you have, that's your subconscious, you have to tell your subconscious, hey, that program is no longer active, let it go. It'll go, oh, it's not? <laughs> because your subconscious is the unreasoning mind. Right. It brings things up to save you. Like, you know, that's it's, that's part of your ego is to protect you. Look both yeah. ways before you cross the street. You're a program like that. So you do so you don't get by but, a car unless you're using your phone. Text yeah. <laughs> but when you're in that state 95% of the day, you cannot be creative. Right. You're not using your frontal lobe, which is your creative lobe, which is what you so use to stuck. create and manifest. It. So exactly. it are, I know that these are kind of like really big concepts. And so you're probably like, what the heck are these people talking about? Um, so let me give you a little bit of a road map and I'm going to use myself as the guinea pig. So I was born with hyaline membrane disease, which is the inability to breathe out. So I was born into that survival protect mode. And because I didn't have those hormones yet where the analytical mind could kick in, it was all about protection. So growing up with immune issues and chronic asthma, bronchitis, all that stuff, then you get to, you know, around eight or nine years old, I had completely blocked, you know, an unfortunate experience that had happened to me until I started getting into all this stuff. Then you pile on bullying and all this stuff. Well, there's no wonder why my subconscious created chronic pain. And the reason why we started digging into all this stuff is because my parents knew that there had to be a reason. There was doctor after doctor, appointment after appointment, lidocaine injections into my head, and the pain still would not go away. So bringing that back to the you know average woman who hopefully isn't manifesting chronic explosive pain but we tend to get trapped in this protect mode because of what's happened to us when we're young and it usually all cycles around the core belief that we are not enough and that's been cycled into our mm -hmm. subconscious from a very young age before mm -hmm. we do have the skills to be able to analyze it so today in today's day and age there's this beautiful thing called the quantum field 
and we're going to go a little bit into this now, but I really want to help show you how we as a family have stepped from protect mode, pain, surface level conversations, survival, and stepped into growth, deeper relationships, deeper conversations, more love, growth mode, and being able to manifest. And I think it's a great idea. I'd like uh, dad to take that. Uh, but the one thing I just wanted to add is when you're in your wounds, then you just repeat that to the next generation. Mm -hmm. So instead, let's say that there is a difficult situation in a family and the family goes, well, you're this and you're that. And everybody gets all mad at each other. And that could be any kind of a family situation or it could be um, even deeper trauma, etc. We all are in our wounds and we don't have the skills to be able to tame it down right then and there. So then uh, I was reading the paper and this woman wrote in and said, I can't believe this happened in my family, but my aunt died and uh, she hadn't spoken to her brother for 33 years. And oh it happened 33 years ago because she came in to visit with the family and she looked at her brother and said, I didn't realize your ears were so big. Well, he was so wounded, and you never know why he was wounded in his past, that mm -hmm. he never spoke to her again. Hmm. So they both died without having any kind of relationship. Wow. What, oh, what, what a waste. What a waste because of the wound. So you've got to, at some point, first of all, go, I don't want to continue to do this. Mm -hmm. There's got to be a different way, a different answer out there and go searching for it. Don't put up with this kind of thing what makes you so unhappy and create the same patterns that your your family or your parents or your grandparents gave you. Who are you? You've got to find that out and you're not the sum collectiveness of what they've told you. You're a totally different blueprint. You're a totally different fingerprint. So you have to look at that as you can at any age, be it 80 or eight, create who you really are. And that's where I'm turning it over to you, well, and sir. I, I think to also clarify that, we have to understand that if we are not fully in the present, we are recreating the past. So that's why you keep entering into these crappy relationships. That's why these friendships keep leaving your life. That's why you're never happy in your job. That's why you keep getting bullied by your boss. That's why you can't, you know, keep an apartment, keep a relationship, keep your health. On and on we go and we tend to go, you know, as a victim, oh my gosh, this is horrible and my life sucks and all that and not realize that we have 100% of the authority and the power to change it. So when we get to the point of being able to actually go, I'm sick of recreating the same old stuff. I want to create something different. That's where what we're about to talk about really starts to kick in. And you know who really grasped this pretty quickly is Sir Nathan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, babe, why don't you talk about it? Well, um, you know, it's it's something that you have to, it takes time to learn how to how to to change, I guess. Um, but once you once you hit that point of wanting to change, you... You start noticing. You notice your patterns, your old negative. A lot of you know could be negative, could be even some positive things. You just want to change about yourself, and you realize, hey, I'm doing this, and it's like I don't want to do that anymore. So when you get to that point, you catch yourself doing it, and you say, oh, you got to change that, and 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 you have to tell. I I would say to myself like, I'd be at work and I'd, I'd start getting angry about something silly, and I'd be like, oh crap, I don't want to be angry. So I'd be like, I'd like whisper to myself, change. And then I'd be like, okay, I'm going to be, I'm not going to let that bother me. I'm not going to let that, that affect me the way it does. And, um, and through that, I mean, I've had some, some relationships at work that have, have really grown and, and gone in completely different directions than 180 degrees from what they were. It was, you know, some people that you just weren't interested in being around anymore and being able to, to actually become friends with them and, and, and have a pleasant and or, you know, a, a decent time. I mean, I'm, we're spending 14 hours with these people. It's better to get along with them and enjoy yeah. their presence than to, to be well, angry and bitter about it. Instead of bringing the anger from past issues into your present environment, that has nothing to do with why you're angry. Right. right. And that was right. the thing I had to really learn is that there was, you know, stuff from the past that had caused this anger, anger to, um, to surface. And, and, you go back and deal with that, and then it changes your changes your present. So you you deal with the stuff in the past, and then become present, and then be able to 
really implement the changes into your future. Mm-hmm. So it took me it, 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 it took me a while. I guess after we started having these conversations and stuff, it took me maybe a year. And then I was like, yeah, but really you never stop trying. Never stop trying. I was trying the different thing and, and <laughs> trying to refuse to go after what it was. And then I was like, no, this it's time to go after it. So we went after it, and it's really it's it's changed my life. I, I've you know complete 180s. You know how I think about things now, which is which is fantastic. Well, and I think it's it's witnessed by little changes. Like Nathan was saying to me last night that when we lived up in Tahunga, how every time he'd call me on his lunch, I would be crying because not only was I in more pain patterns, but one little thing would set me off for days and days and days and days. Being ultra sensitive. Yeah, and like one thing would go wrong with something I was doing online and I'd just give up and Mm -hmm. be depressed. And he said, you don't do that anymore. And at the same time, he'll come home and if he's, you know, upset about something that happened at work, he'll be like, okay, I'm going to give this two minutes. I'm going to express it so it doesn't store in my body and then I'm going to choose joy. And so just those tiny little changes individually, but also in a marriage are so powerful because then you can truly, as a couple, create your future yeah. instead of both being wounded and attacking each other because right. you have nowhere else to go. Well, and doing what somebody else tells you to do. Right. And that's something we do every kind of morning. We look at each other like, let's choose joy today. Mm-hmm. Like the, today, it's, it's Saturday. And we woke up, we're like, we're going to have a great weekend. We're going to have a lot of joy. We're going to just, you know, be able to do whatever we want and have fun doing it. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And that is something that has been implemented I guess for about six months now and it's Mm -hmm. changed our relationship I mean we've had a great marriage and then it just made that into even a better Better, marriage I think it made it a powerful marriage Mm -hmm. oh good word so what what is this quantum field stuff well you know I first started investigating this back in the I don't know the 70s and 80s Right. There's Newtonian physics, which is matter, changing matter. There's the quantum field, which is uh, uh, energy affecting matter. And at first, I first started to really notice it when I was in a, I was in a terrible auto accident my senior year in college. And uh, I got hit 90 degrees by a car, got knocked out, had terrible headaches, and um, went through therapy. And even after the therapy was over and I got better, uh, every now and then I would get these blinding migraine headaches to the point you start seeing sparkly things that make you you couldn't see anything you'd have to go lay in a cold place but and I had chiropractic had all kind of medical treatment I tried drugs and and but nothing really touched these so I said you know there's got to be something that in my mind that's triggering this so I started studying the subconscious and you know uh, and Finally, I came to the point where one day when I was, one of these things, I could always tell the migraine was coming on because I started getting these sparkly things in my eyes. So one day that happened and I said, stop. And I said, it's got to be my subconscious. I said, stop right now. Don't, you're not bringing this up. So that program's not, not active anymore. Stop it right now. And it stopped. And that's the first time it ever happened. What did what? you do? I was kind of I was kind of in shock at first because mm-hmm. it was always a guaranteed. Once you start losing that vision mm-hmm. in the center of your eyes, it was a guaranteed. That was a migraine. It was gonna hurt like the dickens. I can relate to that. <clears throat> and so after that first time, it would still try to come back. So then, what I realized was when I got in a stressful situation, you know, I'd be working on a giant movie under all kind of pressure, that it was my subconscious mind trying to take me out of a pressure situation that it always equated back to that head injury from the accident. Protect. And it would say, protect, protect. Oh, this is going to be too much stress for you. You know, we got to put put you down. And and after that first time, they would still come back sometimes. It took me a while to gain mastery over that program. But finally enough, when I said, hey, stop that, stop that, stop that, change the program. It finally, when I talked to it enough, you have dominance over your subconscious mind. You just have to tell it that, right? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if you don't wake up every morning and set the focus and the intention for your day, and if you don't purpose for what you want your day to be like, your subconscious mind will take over and just run programs from the past all day long because your mind 
is an archive of the past. It's such a giant, unreasoning computer. And every situation you go into, oh, here's how you thought the last time. Oh, you're in this miserable job. Well, you're gonna be and it's like an iRobot, how the main computer, it's all rational mind. And so right. it rationalizes that every human needs to be controlled because right. that's the only way to protect them. Right. Exactly. So let's, you know, <laughs> you know, engineer 100,000 robots to take over the world. Right. So that's <laughs> why it's important when you wake up in the morning. I, I always do this in the shower. I set the intention for the day. Because like my dad told me, he says, listen, we're divinely created. And he says, each of us has a mission and it's our job to find out what that mission is and to help as many people as we can on the way, mm -hmm. you know? So that's the intention I set every morning. I said, you know, I'm gonna have a great day and I'm gonna try to help as many people as I can. I'm gonna have a great time. And uh, just, I'm... So what do you do when that person comes up to you like on the set or whatever and totally yanks your chain? How do you stay out of that? Reptilian. Give that example of that one that you were working with and you did this. Oh, remember? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, when you somebody comes up to you and they're putting up negative energy, they're, they're saying things about you. I said, Well, that's an interesting perspective, but I reject that. And I said, You know, I'll just have to put a mirror up and reflect that back on yourself and take a look. It's beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> and they're, they're dumbfounded. And he, here's the thing. Once. Once you understand how your mind operates and you see people and they, they say things like that to you, if you react to them in love because you have you have seen yourself doing that to other people. Oh, that's so true. So when people say that to me now, I, you know, I don't say this to them in a mean way. I just say, well, I, I you know, that's your perspective. That's not mine. And, you know, uh, I don't agree with that. Uh, and then you release that in love. They don't know how to deal with that. Because mm -hmm. listen, love conquers everything. Yes, you know? it's true. And in a world we're in today, you know, the bad things that are going on, people watch them. I think the worst thing you can do is watch the news every day because that's a very if you you study frequency, fear is a low frequency and it tries to pull everybody down. And then if every day you're not projecting yourself into your future, which is a higher frequency, yeah. creation is a high frequency. And you know, and if you don't if you're not projecting yourself to see what you want to be in your future when you project that image, like, okay, say you want to be a great writer. Well, you need, when you wake up, you need to think positively, seeing yourself with that book you've written. If you're a movie maker, you the movie you've made, you have to put a projection out there of what mm -hmm. you want to become. And I want to get there, but let's, what were you going to say? So I was going to say, when someone comes up to you and says something negative or, uh, you know, tries to get you going, you have to also remember that this, these concepts aren't a lot of people haven't put in the work to 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 get to this level not this level I'm, I'm not saying that but I'm just saying people don't understand this whole mm -hmm. dynamic and the whole quantum field and everything so if you're able to if, if you have any kind of understanding of it and someone comes up to you to try and ruin your day not purposefully or whatever but they just kind of try and set you into a negative pattern it's it helps me to know like this person has no idea what they're doing to me or trying to do and you know I just I'm not gonna accept it I don't wanna I'm not gonna let this person have that kind of control over me that I'm gonna let them ruin my whole day if it wouldn't be so unattractive I would backwards tattoo don't take it personally across my forehead so I could <laughs> see it in the mirror every day yeah yeah <laughs> but I want to talk about the quantum field and how at least I personally understand it and I want you guys to jump in if you um, have a different take I believe in a divine creator I believe that that divine creator created this amazing intelligent just mind-blowing earth and the field that surrounds the earth and the universe and all that stuff. And if you study the actual like chemistry of trees, if you look into the chemistry of the soil and the different organisms that live and thrive and how they feed the trees and the trees feed the atmosphere and you study into essential oils, your mind will be blown. I mean, even just looking at bees and what they do for the earth. So if, if that kind of innate intelligence if that focus was given to the earth, just in terms of a plant, I believe that that divine creator created a space where, where we can go when we're in meditation, when we're in intention to design our future. Mm -hmm. Because just like we were created, that means that we are meant to be creators. So this is a place that you can go when you get out of the 
subconscious mind when you go into is it alpha state when you meditate yes yeah when you go into alpha you're getting state, out of beta you're going down out of beta out of survival where you can actually design your future in agreement with that creator but the difference is we hear a lot as entrepreneurs about hustle you have to hustle to get things done and oh you have to do this to grow your email list you have to do this to grow your following you have to do no 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 and you can get into like what i like to call the e-course craze mm -hmm. yeah. because you think that there's a formula for everything that you can attain by being on that computer mm -hmm. so the difference is in the quantum field you go in there during your meditation and your intentions you design it and then you step away because it's no longer your responsibility to make it happen right well listen steve jobs you know he created Apple, he created the iPhone, and he envisioned this creation he wanted to do in all these different functions, and the engineer said, well, that's not possible, and we can't do it in that time frame. He says, it yes. is, because <laughs> I've imagined it, and I know that we can bring the technology together. So he put them in a mindset where they had to come up with what he had envisioned, because he knew it would work, right? Because he had already created it He had it created in it in his mind. You know, and Same this, as Tesla. Right. And this is not hocus pocus. They can hook your brain up and they, they show the different brain waves when you're in the creative mode, when you're when you're using your frontal lobe. This is the way we've been designed. Yes. And so, like I said, if you want to be a great writer, you want to make a film, I mean, you want to come up with some uh, new creation, you have to envision that. Mm -hmm. You know, my father, you know, he didn't even have a college education, but he was always ahead of his time. Back in World War II, he was imagining the jet engine before it came out. Somebody beat it. Well, to... Nathan's grandfather engineered all these planes right. that didn't I exist that yet diagram. that are freaking brilliant. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and now they're just starting to use those technologies. So if you want to, if you have to see your future of what you want to do, what you want to create before you get out of bed in the morning or while you're in the shower to get that frontal lobe active. And once you put that out there, the way the quantum field works is. It helps you bring the elements together, the, the people, the processes, to help you bring that uh, into creation. You I know? just saw like a book title that's like, Quantum Field, the Invisible Ally. Listen, that's the way God made us. And, you know, we're incredible uh, creatures, mm -hmm. you know, and we can manifest things for good or for evil. Well, and I'm just going to say, if we all spent our time doing that and mm -hmm. meditation means simply to become familiar with right that's all it's yeah. not some it's mystical not hocus, hocus, hocus pocus it's not the new age stuff no I mean, not say, at all but if everybody is, if everybody spent their time in that a little bit each day to create their highest and best use and for the good we wouldn't be having the news headlines like now. We wouldn't be having the same kind of world we have right now because, because everybody's we wouldn't be accessing that low frequency. Judging which is other people, fear, shame, right. anger, guilt, doubt. There's one more, but I forget. I'll put the link below. But we all, I mean, we all still get those. But it's sure. just getting out of it is a total different. It's a total different way of doing it now. And you catch yourself. And we catch ourselves. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, being able to have these, this support group and these people to talk to, it really, it helps you. You're able to talk through your problems or your the feelings that you're having. You know, hey, I'm feeling this today or hey, I'm doing this. And it's like, oh, well, let's talk about it or whatever. And that's something that's, that's so awesome. So if you have mm -hmm. someone to, to do this with, if you have a spouse or a, f a brother or sister or whatever it could be, a family, um, that's that's a huge thing too. Well, and that's why I created the Lady Printer Legacy Facebook group because it's really important to me. I'm in a lot of other groups, but are these leaders living their day in intention and creation? And I know that there's people like Melissa Farr who do, and she teaches on this subject, and she's absolutely brilliant at it, but it is not a well-known phenomenon yet. And I believe that that is why this kind of concept has been laid on these female entrepreneurs' hearts to teach other women how to create. Well, we're based out of a fear-based psychology. That's you know, how we're and what, what is fear? It's false evidence appearing real. And, and that's projected on us from our media, you know, and people get programmed that way. And so people are saying, you know, oh, poor me, this is that. But if you want to change your mind, it takes homework. It's homework you have to work on every day. You can't, it's not, you can't take a pill and do this because how many years of, of 
bad programming have we had? Mm-hmm. You know, if you're 50 years old, you've had 50 years of it, so it's going to take <laughs> you a little longer in homework. But then once you get used to sitting down and quieting your body down and and using that frontal lobe that God gave us to be able to uh, design to, to design and create. It changes your world. I mean, like that. It does change it. And I remember in uh, researching for my thesis, I remember picking up this book, and I don't know why I did, but I ordered it. It was called Power Versus Force. Mm. And written by um, uh, a psychiatrist, an MD. Fascinating book, but he had that map of consciousness, which you are referring to. and I Which was, will be in the link below. <laughs> what I was fascinated with is, you know... Everybody struggles, I think, with joy. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think especially when you are a Christian, you're supposed to be so joyous about stuff, etc. And, uh, and if you can't feel joy, then you feel guilty. And you don't even have to be of a certain religion. It's like, I think one of the most missing elements today is joy. Mm-hmm. So when you look at this map of consciousness, joy is at the very top. It's like a sublime thing. It's right under enlightenment. Yeah. And so I looked down at the bottom. Well, I had been spending my whole time in fear mm-hmm. or anger or shame or guilt. And if you're like that all day long, you cannot experience joy. I don't care how many times people say to you, well, just say this 4,000 times, it's going to help you. It will never Mm -hmm. help you if your conscious and unconscious thoughts are always on that base element. That's right. Because creation occurs at a higher frequency. Yes. You can perpetuate, which is a lower frequency where you drag other people down. Oh, The negative people you see on Facebook attacking each other. So you can easily perpetuate the same in a lower frequency, but you cannot create anything new. It's like Linus. Remember him with the cloud falling around? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Here we go. And what's so amazing (laughs) is that creation was made, number one, um and how creation responds to our intention, be it bad right. or good. And it's like uh, like you and I notice every day how the bees come to the fountain. And they're looking at us in droves like, thank you so much for this water because it's keeping me alive, it's keeping the hive cool. Purified and, water, by the way, with yeah. no chlorine or... Uh, <laughs> and, and that kind of thing. And then the so. other thing is essential oils, that they right. are from creation to mm-hmm. help us raise our frequency so that we can do this kind of work. That's Definitely. just amazing to me. Definitely. So I want to, we're obviously going to dive into this kind of stuff more and more as we do these episodes, but I want to give you something tangible. And I think the easiest way to start stepping out of the past is to start designing your future. And I think the best way to do that is through an intention board. I have one right over here, right in my office, and it's just something easy. Pick it up at Target, get it like one of those kind of, what's it called? Um, Cork. Cork boards where you can put pins in it and just start dreaming, start imagining. Is it building an e-course? Is it writing a book? Is it exercising every day? Is it getting this new job? Is it getting a two bedroom apartment instead of a one bedroom? Is it, you know, all these different things, write them down. And if you can print out photos that will really help you picture that and just sit there and look at the board every day, set a timer on your phone for five minutes and then start speaking about as if you're in that reality now. So for example, I'm gonna look at my board, okay. I am having, I'm looking at, well, I'm going to fall over to my husband keeps waving at me. I'm trying to look at the board. Hang on. Okay. Uh, here we go. Visibility coaching. That's a pro a program that I'm going to be developing. So if I were talking about that, I'd set my timer for five minutes and say, I'm so excited that my visibility coaching has launched. So far, I've brought 10 women into this course, and these are all the different things that we're gonna be going over, and I would dive into it. And then I'm gonna attach an emotion to it. I'm so happy. I'm so happy that I'm in my purpose, that I'm touching these women's lives, and that I'm helping them step out of invisibility because that's how I felt my entire life. And I would go on about that for five minutes. So that is just one tangible exercise that you can do right now to start designing your future. And you know what doing that can do? Totally change where you work. Mm -hmm. Totally change the job you're in. Mm -hmm. And because those doors of possibility open up real doors Mm -hmm. of possibility. And then, you know, 
look at you. You're going to be directing a movie soon, and that just mm -hmm. came to you because you had already opened those doors. Right. Nathan jumped up, and he's one of the youngest guys for his job level, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that started with you. Yeah. So just before we go, I want you to talk about your balloons. Okay, so Michelle, the, the family here, we were, they were talking about the intentions and, and how they do their intentions and stuff. And I, 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 have, I have not been able to do all the research and stuff that they've all done. So I'll be, I'll be honest about that. Um, so they are, they're leaps and bounds ahead of me. But I just I came up with my own little system and I told Michelle, I said, I'm going to do it this way. And I come up with a color Every day I come up with a color, it'll be red, you know, it'll cycle through, and um, when I run out of colors, I start over. But uh, I, I choose a color, and I choose a balloon, um, so I do like a red balloon. In his mind. In my mind. And I will uh, attach like a little package to the balloon, and in the, in the package will be something, my intention, whatever it could be, you know, if it's, um, you know, a certain kind of job, or moving up in my job position, or if it's going on a vacation. And I'll think about it, I'll think about the vacation, I'll think about uh, you know, the things that we would do on the vacation, I'd think about the feelings that would, you know, I'd attach a feeling to it as well. So I'd be like, oh, we're gonna go to the Grand, uh, where, where Talk about the Grand Sequoias. Church, or Sequoia, we'll go to the Sequoias, and we're gonna go hiking, and we're gonna go up in the mountains, it's gonna be clean, fresh air, and I'm gonna just gonna feel free, I'm gonna feel joy, I'm gonna feel uh, like, you know, the world, is that I'm the only person in the world, and uh, and then I'll just let it go. I'll let it go, and I'll, I'll in my mind's eye, I'll imagine the balloon floating up and just disappearing, and then I move on with my day. I don't sit and dwell on it. I don't, I don't think about it again until the next day, um, and that has really just kind of changed things for me. You know, I, the way I, the way I set my intentions out there, and even you know, I'll do one in the morning when I first wake up, and then. Um, I'll go out through the day and then I'll think of some. Oh, hey, this would be a great thing. So then I'll uh, I'll start another one. Right, well, let's take a green balloon and let's let's imagine this. And you know, whenever anything that I want to do it hits me, it's like I'll, I'll think of it. I'll put an intention to it. I'll put a feeling with it, and then I'll just let it go. And then you know, I'll add that to a list to do tomorrow. So in the morning, I might do three or four balloons, and then throughout the day, do two or three more, and then add that. And so the next day, I'm doing five or six balloons in the morning. But they're all out there, Nathan. They're all out there floating. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's been good. And then once it's, all, once it's done, I just cross off the list and then move on to the next one. And we celebrate it. And we celebrate really it. really important, it's important to celebrate it. We do so dance parties. Do. I am not a good dancer, but we do dance parties. You Michelle know, says I dance like a little two-year-old in a diaper. He does. The march. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I know that we're probably wrapping up. I just wanted to say for your listeners... Uh, that what we just did here is what we do over dinner. Yes. You know, once in a while we'll watch a movie, but mostly it's at the dining room table up at the ranch and we're sitting there, we're talking. The next thing we know, there's been a bottle of wine killed or maybe two, and the next mm -hmm. thing it's, you know, nine o'clock and we started dinner at six. Well, and there's always, whenever we come together, I think today might be the only exception, but every other time one of us is struggling. One of us is in the past, one of us is a lower frequency, and the other three have to help. Yes. And that's why it's so important to, you know, as you step into these new ways of behaving, your relationships are going to change. I'm just going to tell you that right now. You're going to keep some, you're going to lose some, and you're definitely going to get new ones. And a part of attracting those new ones is that they are going to be more on this level. So they're going to be your support system. They're the ones that you can be honest with. And like we say, you know, hey, dad, I'm really struggling with this today. Or hey, mom, da, 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 da. And we spend that time helping to counsel each other because you're not perfect and you cannot do this by yourself. Or Nate goes, one of my balloons popped. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I know it hit me on the head. <laughs> or, I mean, the other thing too is if you're, not, if you're not the one struggling and you're just there helping out, you also learn a lot yes. just by yeah, listening. Listen yes. And we'll save you some pain later. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and if you are struggling, if the one struggling or not the one struggling, you also, whenever we part ways and Michelle and I go home or, you know, Tony and Arthur go home, we always... At least I feel you always feel better, even if you're not the one struggling. You, you yeah. get out of there, come out of there, just feeling light and, yeah. and ex, you know, like you've released a balloon, <laughs> <laughs> or like you've attached thirty balloons to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so. 
So I, I really hope that this has touched you in some way. I hope it's giving you encouragement and helped you really feel that you are not alone on this journey. I hope you've enjoyed my wonderful family and uh, we're going to definitely be doing more of these in the future. What we've talked about, the certain concepts and certain books and stuff, I will put in the links below. And if you haven't already, we would absolutely love for you to subscribe to this podcast because we are really having an amazing time together. I think everybody needs a family circle. And if yeah. they don't have it in their own life, uh, maybe soon they will. And in, in the meantime, they can tune into this. Exactly. And then they get their friend circle going. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. exactly. Exactly. So we are honored to be a part of your circle today and we will see you next time. Thanks for listening in today to the Visibility Vixen podcast. Subscribe now and share with a fellow Vixen who wants to start building their visibility. For more fire in your life and brand, visit visibilityvixen.com.